Hey, hey, what's up? How you doing today? I'm going to show you how I tuned up this little cheap Homedics sound machine. Um, I just tuned this one up. It was pretty pretty easy, straightforward. To, you know, um, I've done at least two or three of these, and <sighs> you may be wondering why I try and fix something that's so cheap. These things are like probably no more than $15 now, probably less. You might get one for half of that, but uh, the factory really should do, when they when they put them together at the factory, they should do what I'm going to show you how to do, which is the same fix I show for several, I've shown in other videos, the computer speakers, the moving uh, motor parts, like the commutator and stuff. All you need is... Um, some electronic cleaner, uh, number one Phillips head screwdriver, some ox guard electrical grease from Home Depot or eBay, wherever, and one or two toothbrushes. And also a number zero Phillips bit, or a PZ is what this one is. PZ.0, very small. for, But th this one was screwed up. It would only turn on, the way you had to turn it on is you had to turn the, the knob all the way up, almost all the way up anyway, to get it to wake up, sort of. Because the weak link is always these little funky rheostats, or potentiometers. So this one I've been using, but it's real annoying. So it's working smooth now. See? It turns on. You can hear the sound as soon as it turns on. Before, I was having to turn it almost wide open, max volume or close to it, to get it to, like, wake up. But it's working smooth now. Now, this button here is a little loose because I've got all the screws out. I'm going to show you how I did this. Unplug it for safety. Wouldn't want all that, all those milliamps to get me. So... I've already got all the screws out. All you got to do is take this apart. And these wires are just for power supply. So if one of them comes loose, you can solder it back. You'll use your number one Phillips head to take those four screws out of the bottom. Then you'll use it again to take out about another four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, right here on this little circuit board too. So you just take this loose. Then the knob, make sure I'm getting this in the, hold on, let me, this is going to get small, so let me zoom in a little bit. Sorry, bear with me. Okay. I'll have to get behind the camera and watch. So, all right, I'm in there. So you get, get this guy loose, then you'll have to use maybe a knife or your fingernail and just pop this the knob off come on speak of the devil and that only goes on one way so throw that to the side then this is where it gets a little bit difficult you have to take something like a scribe or a very small pick you know um, I used a, a small scribe like this and this little bitty Phillips head screw that you will use the number one Phillips head on is in the center of this, the rheostat. And you'll have to scrape like some glue or something out of the, the head of that screw. Because here it is, and here's how small it is. Let me see. Can... See how small that guy is? Just to give you a reference. But you can also use, if you don't have a number zero Phillips head, you can use some of these small eyeglass flathead screwdrivers. And that's what I was using at first until I realized I had a, a number zero Phillips head screw bit. So you'll take that guy out. And then this guy goes on. Is on there. It fits in the center of the stem of that rheostat. Then you'll find, have already had this off, a small little, kind of like a piece of paper, but it's like 
maybe wax paper or something covers it and goes on there kind of snug and this is what this is what you, you're working with so take your electronic cleaner from whatever brand it doesn't matter and spray it probably you want to turn this thing focus we want to turn this thing probably wide open where you can kind of get to some of the contacts of that, where that thing wipes. And then just hit it with your electronic cleaner right there. Well, am I, and I'm in the way, sorry. And then take, if you've got a clean toothbrush, while that electronic cleaner's in there and wet, just kind of work it and try and see if you can get some dirt and crap out of there. And then it dries pretty quick. So then you go back and let it dry. You might you might turn it all the way off and on a few times to make sure you're kind of trying to get it clean. Then, you know, swing by Home Depot or eBay or wherever you order stuff from and get some of this OxGuard electrical grease. It looks like regular grease. It's dark. But put some on the very end of your toothbrush. On I mean the very end, like right out there. So you can get some down in there <clears throat> and work it in there pretty good and then turn it all the way off, all the way on and try to work it in there in all positions and uh, that should tune it up pretty good. Then put it back together and hopefully it'll work. If you want, you can put a little bit of lube on this tip right here where it turns off and on and it might make it turn off and on a little smoother a little easier but it doesn't matter it's awesome when you put that little screw back in this guy see if i can get it on come on <clears throat> when you put that little screw back in there how tight that is determines how tight the action is going to be so just barely snug it really or else it's tighter than necessary. So that's about it. Then when you put this back together, let me zoom out a little. You just use your four L green LEDs to kind of as a guide. And it should go back in there pretty easy. There's always something that hangs, it hangs up somewhere. But I think those four LEDs, there you go. See, it drops in there. One of those screws is kind of on the side, sort of, but anyway, you've got to put this in there before you put this back together. If you wanted to, you could probably like take and sand this rim off of this, and then you could put it in from the top side, but it doesn't matter. As long as that thing stays on there, and doesn't fall off. But <clears throat> that's about it. Hopefully that'll tune it up for you. Uh, factory doesn't have time to do stuff like that. Time is money, and these things are dirt cheap, so why do a good job, right? But that's it. Just like other videos I've showed tuning up rheostats or pots, potentiometers, whatever, and motor commutators. So good stuff. Sometimes I call it magic grease. A lot of times all you need is what's saturated in your toothbrush, especially for like um, your TV remote, double and triple A batteries, flashlights and stuff like that. Watch batteries. I don't know if people fool with cell phone batteries anymore, but maybe I guess certain ones. Um, but yeah, this stuff rocks. You can use this. This stuff is not conductive. <clears throat> Permatex, dielectric. <clears throat> it's clear like kind of like Vaseline, but um, I Like to use this kind inside connections and this side on the outside of connections, but Whatever good luck. Wish you the best maybe save you a trip to the store and buy another one of these um, Let's see what's jamming on my jukebox bear with me <clears throat> What did I have going here wake up Ah, something to chill to. Perfect Circle. That was a good album. I don't know what Orestus means, though. Mm. 
not my music, just a fan. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to Perfect Circle, Maynard, and the record company. Now I can't see. Have a good one.